In an early video, we had a first introduction to mixed numbers. So remember there, mixed numbers a whole number plus a fractional quantity. Except people get a little bit sneaky and don't bother writing the plus sign. It really should be there for them. They'll actually squish these two symbols together without the plus sign. A and B seats. So for example, two and a half, which is really two plus a half is a mixed number. And five and three quarters is really five plus three quarters, it's a mixed number. Actually, you can be quirky, and people don't tend to be quirky, but technically, two and five tooths is a mixed number. And four and negative two thirds is a mixed number. And seven and zero ninths is a mixed number. Though most people might say, no, no, James, please rewrite that one as, as what is it, four and a half. Do you see it's four and a half, really? And please write this one as three and a third. Do you see that one's really three and a third? And please write that one as just seven. All right, so however you want to write it, most people just want a whole number and a proper fraction, small numerator, bigger denominator, or everything positive there, great, fine. Though I could do negative seven and a half, that'll be fine to have a negative number out front. I want a negative whole number up front, but they always want the fractional part not to have any negative signs involved. Just a style thing. All these are mathematically valid, nothing wrong with them mathematically. All right, so I want to just do some basic arithmetic of mixed numbers, which I did not do last time, and I'm going to clean the board and be right back. Oh, as I was cleaning the board, I realized I skipped over a subtle point about societal convention to do with things that look like this, negative seven and a half. This, as it stands, is actually ambiguous. It could mean two possible things. Does it mean negative seven, then add a half? Or does it mean the opposite of all of seven and a half? That would be the opposite of seven and the opposite of a half. Namely, the opposite of seven and the opposite of a half. Whoa! There are actually two different numbers. I mean, this first interpretation gets me to negative seven plus a half gets me to here. Negative seven plus a half gets me to there on the number line, that point. Whereas this one is negative seven, take away a half, brings me down from negative seven to there, to that point. So they really are different numbers. Well, I need to point something out. Society has made the choice. They say if you see something like negative seven and a half, negative a mixed number, they actually mean this interpretation. The negative of the entire quantity of the seven and of the half. So negative A, B, C is actually negative A and negative B, C together. Societal choice, gone with that. So this is actually the interpretation of negative seven and a half. So it makes you wonder then, how would I write that point? Well, that is negative six down an extra half. As you can see, this one here is negative six and a half. Very subtle, a little bit confusing. It's just a choice society's made to go this route, and that's the route we go now. I'm glad I caught that before I carried on. Okay, here's an example. Please write 39 eighths as a mixed number. Now, the advantage of doing this, actually, it gives me some intuitive feel for how big that number actually is. Right now, I don't really have a sense of the size of 39 eighths. If I can rewrite this as a sort of whole number, I've got like a, a good sense of its size with a fractional part. Mixed numbers actually provide some intuition about how big a number like that actually is. Now, I'm not going to draw out the pies per student model. I could draw out 39 pies and eight students and try to figure it out. That's fine. Just take a while. But I'm going to assume now we're very familiar with the mechanics of fractions and all the addition and subtraction and multiplication division and just do it and see it in a more efficient way if I can. So, eighths, eighths, the bottom is eighths. I wonder if I can bring some sort of eighth thinking into the, into the 39. And my brain says, well, 32's got lots of eighths in it, so let me think of this 39 eighths as really 32 plus 7 eighths. By the mechanics of adding fractions, we know that really is the same as 32 eighths plus 7 eighths. 32 eighths, why do I like 32? Because it's got lots of eights in it. It's actually 4 times 8 on the top, and this bottom is really 1 times 8 plus 7 eighths still. Oh, by fraction belief number 4, eighths don't matter. This is really 4 over 1. It's really 4 plus 7 eighths. So this is really the mixed number 4 and 7 eighths. So I can see right now, it's basically almost 5 pi per student, just shy, shy of 1 eighth of a pi per student. There, I've got an intuitive feel for that number. Great. That's why people like mixed numbers. So let's do another example. All right, this time let's go backwards. Here's a mixed number, 20 and 1 20th. Please write 20 and 1 20th as an improper fraction. There's a, a single fraction with a numerator, a denominator, and be done. Um, okay, okay, let's do it. Uh, here's my answer. So 20 and 1 20th. Let me actually write out the plus sign, because that's actually always helping these things. 20 plus 1 20th, great. 
I want this to be a fraction, a single numerator and a single denominator. So let me write the 20 as a fraction. That is going to be this belief over here. I'm going to do is 20 over 1 plus 1 20th. So now I'm just adding fractions. Um, let me do that by doing a common denominator. Let's multiply this, this top by 20 and this bottom by 20 because that I can see now will be something over 20 plus 1 20th. Uh, what's the something? 20 times 20 is 400 over 20 plus 1 20th makes for 401. 20th. Bingo. There it is as a improper fraction. Okay, let's now multiply two mixed numbers. Please find the product of four and a half and three and a third. Now when students first see these sorts of things, it's very, very tempting to write, oh, the answer must be uh, 12 and a sixth. See where that's coming from? I mean, it seems very natural when we go four times three is 12, a half times a third is going to be a sixth, done, 12 and one sixth. Turns out that's not correct. That's not correct. Because we're missing stuff. We're missing stuff. And the way to see the stuff you're missing is, okay, okay. This is really, here's the answer. Remember, this is really four plus a half times three plus a third. It's really actually going back to the distributive rule. We're actually chopping up a rectangle. And remember, we like to say all those rules of arithmetic, including chopping up rectangles, should hold no matter what. Should hold even for this example. So what's the rectangle I've got here? What's the rectangle? I've got four and a half. So I've got four and a half. I've got three and a third. I've got three and a third. Okay, my rectangle is so not to scale, it doesn't matter. Its information is correct. Now, it's true, I do get a four times three piece. I do get 12. And I do get a half times a third piece. And um, I'm assuming we know how to multiply fractions now in our heads. That does indeed it turn out to be one six. So that part was all correct. It was just missing more. It was missing this piece and this piece. <clears throat> four times a third is four thirds. And it was missing three times a half is three halves. So actually, the true answer is 12 plus four thirds plus three halves plus one sixth. All right, so now I have to actually uh, do the, all that out. Um, it looks like if I make everything in terms of sixths, life could be good. So let me do that. This is 12. To make this into the six, I'm going to do doubling, eight sixths. To make this into terms of six, I'll do tripling, plus nine sixths, and I've already got the one sixth. So I've got 12 and uh, 10, 18 six. 12 plus 18 sixths. Uh, oh, uh, that's really six times three, six times one. I see that's really just three. The answer is 15. It should turn out to be a nice whole number. Wow, wouldn't expect that, but there it is. Nice whole number 15. There is one way to do that, and I actually do recommend, at least in your mind's eye, draw out the rectangle to make sure you don't miss pieces, because then, you know, if you just follow your logical nose and brain right there, things will fall into place. Though, I will should point out that some people might like to do these sorts of problems this way instead. It's the second way to think this through. Uh, rewrite these mixed numbers as improper fractions. For example, four and a half times three and a third. I don't know if you can see it, but spend a moment, that's really nine halves. And three and a third, I don't know if you can really see it right now, but that's actually really 10 thirds. So actually, by multiplication of fractions, this is 96, and that's really what, uh, six times 15 and six times one? Yes, that's really 15. 90 divided by six is 15. Wow. Great stuff, there it is. And dividing mixed numbers, I feel like we did that in a previous video. So we've got it covered now, this is great.